Hello, beautiful souls. I'm going to be giving you the second video for this week's topic of letting go. Today, I'm going to cover material attachments. I know, I know, I know. Life is so much better with all the AI controlling us, right? No. And there's more. So the first thing I want to do, because so much of the attachment to material things in our world is ego driven. And you may already be getting triggered, you know, triggering is just a spot on the map for you to do your shadow work. I want you to understand the ego and the egoic mind is not your friend. It's not necessary for living. It is not. So we're going to, I'm going to define a few things for you as found on your whatever favorite search engine. Ego, a person's sense of self-esteem and self-importance. The egoic mind, aspect of the mind that is self-centered, where thoughts, motives, and emotions with behaviors revolve around the self. Often, the voice in your head, the egoic mind can create the illusion and emotions to manipulate reality to serve the self. Do you see a theme there? How many times is self in the definition of egoic and ego? One, two, three, four, five, five, self. In our duality, polarity planet that we live in, you're either service to self or you're service to others. Service to self is lower vibration, lower frequency, lower timeline, and the opposite of ascending service to others, higher frequency, higher vibration, higher timeline, and is ascending right then and there. You got a choice to make. Am I service to self or am I service to others? A lot of people like to think they're service to others, but when they really look back at their decisions, their choices that they make, the choices that they make on a daily basis, they make choices for themselves first. And not in a self-love, self-healing, self-compassion way. This is different. So common with those beings who have not completed shadow work, you see, because as you actually do the shadow work in an authentic way, you naturally let go and diminish the power that the ego has over you. And you naturally let go of material things. But I'm just going to give you a rundown. Now, this is a scale of the Hertz frequency that corresponds with different emotions and kind of how they they uh, link us to a place in life. <clears throat> Shame. 20 Hertz on the scale connected to humiliation, misery, and they despise God. So they look at their life view as miserable. Their God view is despicable. And they're in the process of eliminating being alive, if you know what I mean. Guilt, 30 hertz, connected to blame, evil. They feel vindictive. They feel like God is vindictive. And they want to do, they are, have a pattern of destruction because they don't care. Apathy, 50 hertz. They feel the emotions of despair predominantly. They are hopeless in life. They are condemning the gods and they basically abdicate their life. They just want to remove it from existence. Grief, 75 on hertz. They're full of regret. They see life as tragic. God is disdainful and their outlook is despondent. Fear. One hundred hertz, full of anxiety. Life view is frightening to them. God view is 
punitive, so they feel punished by God, and they're withdrawn in their outlook on life. This next one is desire. 125 hertz. And this is where I would say most of those that deal with addiction fall. So they have the overwhelming emotion of craving, a craving that cannot be quenched. Their life view is they're very disappointed. Their God view is that they deny God. And their outlook is enslavement. They feel enslaved by the world, I guess. And so they escape it with their various addictions. So drugs, alcohol, sex, um, shopping, food, sugar, anything. Okay. Now we have what I would call the NPC group. (laughs) I hate that we even have that, but it's true. Um, their predominant feeling is anger. They have a Hertz of 150. Their predominant emotion is hate. Their life view is antagonistic. Their God view is vengeful. They feel like God is vinging and their outlook on life is aggression. So these are literally the anarchist. These are the anarchist. And I have to equate that with NPCs. The next one is. I'm going to equate more with like the negative AI group and the ones that really lean on AI a lot and see it as truly harmless. Okay. Pride hurts of 175. Their overall emotion is scorn. Their life view is very demanding. They demand the position. They demand respect. They demand the benefits. They demand things, everything. Their God view is indifferent. They could care less. Doesn't feel like it affects them one way or the other. And their outlook is inflated. (laughs) They are full of themselves because they feel empowered by the AI. I feel like they're empowered by all the things. They're empowered by um, their position that they've demanded and apparently gotten. Now the, that's a lower, the lower half of that scale. The scale goes from zero to a thousand. This next group is getting into more higher consciousness. Courage, 200 Hertz, overwhelming feeling of affirming emotion. Their life view is feasible. Their God view is permitting. So they're permitting the concept of God. And their process, our outlook on life is empowered. They feel empowered for change. Then we have neutrality, 250 on the hertz. Their overwhelming emotion is trust. Their life view is satisfactory. Their God view is enabled. So they're they're wanting to um, engage. And their outlook is of release. They're releasing what does not serve them. Next is willingness, 310 on the hertz. Their overwhelming emotion is optimism. They are hopeful in life. Their God view is inspired and their outlook is full of intention. Acceptance, 350 on the hertz. Their overwhelming emotion is forgiveness. Their life view is harmonious. Their God view is merciful and their outlook on life is transcendence. So they're looking to transcend dimensions and transcend places where they've been because they're in a a, a state of acceptance they're accepting new things they're accepting that that it's no longer this but it could also be that reason 400 hertz their overwhelming emotion of understanding their view of life is meaningful their view of god is wise and their outlook is abstract so that means like they can literally see things in what we maybe view as just the forest and they see it as a wealth of knowledge or uh, grounding or wisdom because it is all of those things. Okay. Uh, love. We get into the good stuff now. Love. 500 hertz. The overwhelming re- emotion is reverence. Their view of life is benign. Their view of love, uh, God is loving and outlook is 
revelation. So they're having revelation after revelation. Like love is the key that opens doors, right? And many, many times when you get to this point, love is the key that is opening new pathways of learning, uh, soul expansion, all the things. And we are loving it. Then we have joy, 540 on the hertz. Overwhelming emotion is serenity. View of life is that everything they ever wanted to do is complete. View of God is they're at one. They're at one with God's source, I, the I am presence. And their outlook is transfiguring. So they are changing all sorts of views and perspectives. Then we have peace, 600 hertz. Their overwhelming emotion is bliss. Their view of life is perfect. Their view of God is all being. And their outlook is illuminated. Then we have enlightenment. This is a range of 700 to 1000 hertz. Their overwhelming emotion is ineffable. Nothing bothers them at all. View of life is. Life is what you make of it in the now moment. The view of God, the self, the I am. And the overwhelming outlook is pure consciousness. Now, a little bit about density versus dimension, because this is a big conversation and people get kind of hung up on it. They get confused on different things. The density is the planet density. The consciousness is the dimension of the people, the overwhelming consciousness. Now, the soul of the planet ascends in her consciousness and that ascends the density of the planet it's all connected so third density self-awareness subconscious is veiled from the consciousness to give a genuine choice of polarity are you service to self or are you service to others fourth density which is new earth hunamatea or bless gaia is love. Yeshua is the archetype of the fourth density beings who embody lessons of light and wisdom. Earth has been ascending in its density since 2012. The people have been trying to play catch up. That's true. Third dimension. Now this is consciousness. Okay. So we went third density to fourth density. That's already transpired. Third dimension is consciousness complex body with developing brains and allows a complex thought we use logic to determine our actions third density and third dimension work are closely linked together but you can when you start to ascend as a people out of the density and out of the dimension there's a, a, a range many more dimensions than densities so fourth dimension that's kind of what we call the in-between consciousness we observe our mind from our consciousness as we awaken and enlighten we expand our awareness to include consciousness itself the ability to serve our thoughts direct our mind humans can then be more self-aware of our presence and develop a deeper emotion and relationship more than just survival so Again, in third dimension, you're just surviving. You're making choices of do this and don't do that. If I do that, I'll live. And if I don't do that, I'll die. Like a lot of people literally live their life that way. And they get forced to make bad decisions because they're they're in fear of making the wrong choice. Fourth dimension, you are you go deeper than that. You understand that the energy is to develop um, energetic connections and relationships that feed our soul, and so that is where you start to thrive versus just survive. And now, the goal for us right now in the now moment is fifth dimension consciousness. Your spirit body, your light body, your subtle energy body are all one. They're synonymous. They're all on the even playing field. The larger oversoul incarnates in the life stream with a sense of experiencing physical pain, aka your shadow work, and allows for deeper understanding of the causes and how to avoid that in the now, which is your higher consciousness free will choice. There's free will choice all like third dimen third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and up. Free will choice. Souls have free will choice. The, a prime example is, let's say your grandma dies and 
you were really, really close to her and you want to know if she's one of your guides, but grandma's tired. Grandma's incarnated a lot of times. And when she got done with this life incarnation, she wanted to rest. She wanted to heal her energy body. She just wanted to rest. She didn't want to be responsible for anybody else right now. So she declined being a guide for you. And that hurt your feelings. But we have to respect that every soul has a choice. Every soul has free will choice in what they do. And she didn't want to work for a while. That's okay. Happens all the time. So the reason I highlighted all these characteristics is so that you understood dimension and density as it relates to our, what we're currently experiencing. So the 25,000 year cycle that the planets go through as they ascend and that changes their density. In the past for Earth, every time that 25,000 year cycle started over, there was an extinction event because the people were of such low vibration that it was impossible for them to ascend with the planet alive. Now, we're ascending with the planet because we have such a huge number, percentage of higher consciousness beings on the planet in the population. Give yourself a pat on the back. We're doing good work here. This is what we were volunteered and chosen to come here to do is to elevate the frequency and elevate humanity out of third dimension into fourth dimension into fifth dimension this is what it's about but as we do that it requires work and that's why it's so damn hard if all the other ascension events planetary cycles required the population be wiped off the face of the planet because they couldn't tolerate the ascension. Do you honestly think it's going to be easy? It's not. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of diligence and a lot of faith. And that is where we come in. We kind of just keep giving you these faith infusions and, and step-by-step -step guides, breaking it down. That's my intention. That's why source creator put me on YouTube. <laughs> so that I could pull in messages, understanding the energy of the, of the population of the collective and give you some helpful tips and tricks and guidance and things that we've learned along the way. And no, I don't know it all. And no, I don't pretend that I'm better than anyone else. I just know that this is a tough journey. And if anything I say here helps you, so be it. Now, material attachments such a touchy subject and I'm gonna always 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 I try to give you ex my experiences with things so needs versus wants this was really important for me and the first time I heard it I didn't get it because I hadn't done my shadow work so the person I used to be was very driven by um the need to be respected. And I felt that there was such a lack of um, genuine like relationship and emotional connection. I filled those voids with stuff, stuff. So I always had a lot of things. I had a lot of shoes, I had a lot of clothes, uh, a lot of jewelry. I always like to have new cars and new phones and um, purses and always got my hair done and my nails done and all the things. And I worried in, to a degree what people thought about me when they looked at me driving my car because I was um, very disingenuous in the person that I was. I was very judgmental of others and so I felt like they were judgmental of me. So the first time I heard what I'm about to give you, I did not get it because I had not done the shadow work. My frequency was too low. Now, the second time I went through it, I intentionally went back and found it because I felt called to hear this message again. And it was a message channel through Daryl Anka from Bashar. And it was about needs versus wants. And when I listened to it again, I said, aha, now I get it. 
because I had gone through the shadow work and the natural progression of shadow work brings you here to needs versus wants and understanding that on a completely different perspective. So these are the seven neutral needs to survive. And they're in order of how, in in the absence of them, how quickly would you die? Because <laughs> this is a need for life. Okay, the first one is air, oxygen. Three to five minutes without it and you die. Pretty simple, straightforward. The second, water. Three to five days without it and you die. The third one, you might be thinking it's food because we focus a lot on food and water and food go together, right? But it's not, it's sleep. Seven to 11 days without sleep. Unfortunately, they've actually studied this. I feel really bad for the study subjects that did this. But anyway, seven to 11 days without sleep and the body will decay and die. Now we get to eat food. Three weeks without food of any kind and your body will suffer renal failure, um, you know, low blood sugar, lack of resources, lack of glucose, and you die. Okay, now we get into shelter. Shelter is got a, a variable of time and intensity. So if you're without shelter in the mountains in the winter, you're going to be dead of exposure in a short order of time, um, hours to days. If you're in a Southern climate and it's warm and you can uh, get into some shade and you have access to water and food and things like that, your, your time to live in that type of environment is longer, but ultimately does harm you because <clears throat> you, we do in our human form require um, protection from the elements, protection from the weather, um, moderate temperatures, that kind of thing. And so it's time and intensity variable, but we to survive, we as humans need to have some form of shelter. The next one is connection with highest and best, um, like relationship connection. So an energetic connection that's in your highest and best good. So this doesn't necessarily have to be with another human being. It just needs to be genuine, a genuine heart, soul felt connection. There are many people that have deep, deep connections to the land that they live on and they don't really get much from people and that's okay. They have their land, they have their animals and that's where their heart connection is. And that sustains them for so, so long. But then if they lost their land or they lost their animals, they've lost that connection. And the other things don't matter. They start to wither away. Um, so again, that's a variable. And the last one is creative expression of the authentic self. True, authentic, sovereign expression. So that is you not being censored in your truth. You being able to show the world who you really are without fear of retribution or cancellation or censorship or any of that. If we live in a muted, censored, non-free speech type of environment, it is detrimental to our health. And why? We are energy. We are energy bodies. And if we do not share that energy out as it comes in, it gets stored in our body and it starts to clog things. Things do not start, they're not flowing anymore. We're supposed to have a flow of energy through the top of our chakra tube, down through the core, and then back up and out. Okay. We receive in through the backside of our chakra. We extend it out. We send it out from the front side of our chakras. It's meant to be flowing, flowing all around. It's not meant to be held within. It's not meant to be silenced or muted or censored. Okay. And it's not a matter of, um, we don't, we'll allow free speech for what we like to hear. It's free speech. That's the end of the sentence. All speech. So this is an actual component of living, of living. Now, with that knowledge, you want to compare where you focus your energy. 
And what do you give your energy to? And what do you need to live? So where do you give your energy to? Do you give your energy to the things that are needs? Or do you give your energy to things that are wants? And do you ignore the needs to an extent? Of course, you're not going to ignore one through four. Most people are not going to live very long if they ignore one through four. But it's the shelter, the connection, the deep connections, and the creative expression that gets manipulated quite often. So yes, you can have more than what you need to survive. I'm not telling you that. That's not my message here today. But my message is that if you listen to the ego and the egoic mind tell you that you need to have certain things and you need to have certain people and you need to live in certain places and you got to have a certain car or else you're nothing and you got to have a certain job unless, you know, or else you're nothing and you got to go here and go there and do this and do that. Well, then you're not really living off what you're not feeding the energy to what you need. You're feeding the ego and the ego will drain you without any regard of your true well-being. It's in the definition of egoic mind. Now, again, we cannot trust our mind. We cannot trust our mind. You cannot trust your mind. The mind is the most manipulated organ because it starts in preschool. It starts with nursery rhymes. It starts with the education system is built to disempower you. It, they teach you words that take your power and give it away. So your mind, every, every being that has higher degrees of education are most at risk because they're all super inflated on things that are really not good for them. So the thing is that our matrix world teach us judgment, competition, worthiness, wealth, competence, nepotism, shame, blame, guilt, fear, all socially acceptable in forms of bullying. You see this played out time and time again from the upper echelons of, of companies and corporations and governments all the way down to um, your regular Joe. They all have to deal with this stuff to an extent if they choose to. They feel like it's a part of living. They feel like it's a part of being alive. It's really more like dying a slow death, in my opinion. Sports, winners, losers. They all bolster low-frequency characteristics. Homes, excessive and above the level of what you need for shelter. A home that provides shelter does not need to be a mansion, doesn't need to be above what you can afford so that you feel worthy of your neighbor's not judging you. Education. It's all Luciferian and based on satanic, yet viewed as the cream of the crop, right? Oh, they're Ivy Leaguer or whatever. That's all based off of the same Luciferian system. Cars, your ride, your rig, judgment, competition, status versus just simply being in something that's safe can get you from point A to point B. That's the purpose of transportation. That one was a big one for me. Bank accounts. Mine's bigger than yours kind of a thing. What difference does it make if you have a comma or just a decimal? What difference does it make? How many really, really wealthy people do you know or know of that are really good people? I can't really think of any. Did you come up with someone? Please drop it in the comments. Now, you can have a huge heart. You can be the most generous person ever and always doing for others and rarely asking for anything for yourself, which I highly recommend to change that part. But you could live in a little bitty one bedroom house and only have what you absolutely need. And yet, 
your energy, your vibe, your aura is huge. And the rippling effect that you have in the community is so much bigger than those with the big giant bank accounts in the corporate offices. Think about that. That positive influx of energy versus the negative influx of energy. All of this actually pulls us away and deeper into loneliness, right? Deeper into emptiness. How many folks get the big, big house and then the marriage fails and the children leave and they end up being lonely and depressed and feel unloved and unworthy because they've filled their life with things instead of true emotions and true relationships. And they are not authentic. They never once spoke up and said, I got this big house because I wanted to fill it with loving family, but I ended up filling it with things and everyone felt alienated and they all left me. Revelation after revelation. So ask yourself, am I listening to the egoic mind? Is the egoic mind telling me that having fill in the blank, is better for me. Do I actually even know what makes my soul happy? What makes me happy? Do I even know what real happiness is? Because I buy shit and I have shit and nothing makes me happier because it's inside. That's where you got to do the work and it doesn't cost anything. Not one single dime that costs your energy and your investment is in yourself and doing the work and being true, authentic, and sovereign. The labels embolden judgment based on the assumption of power, money, and authority. Are poor people in our world less than those with large net worth bank accounts? Are they better? Are they good? Are they... What does what difference does that make? It doesn't. It doesn't at all. When you work through your shadow work, this aligns you back to source because you start to just naturally go. That doesn't make me feel good. That doesn't serve me. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to give it away. I'm going to let someone else benefit from that. I don't need it. I don't need it. And you really start to transform your perspective away from needing all this stuff to just being whole, authentic, and sovereign in your being, in your energy, in your power. That's where the gold is. So the more we allow the egoic mind to exert power over our soul path, the more we give our power away, always 100%. That is the crux of it. So when you're constantly upgrading your phone, your cars, your TV, your computer, your glasses, now you got AI glasses that know everything you see and think and feel. Hello. I, and then you want, and then you want, and then you think you have security. You think you have privacy. You're wearing glasses that are connected to the cloud. You don't have privacy. <laughs> Give me a break. Um, and then you want to be indignant about it. How dare you know my blah, blah, blah. Well, you told everybody. Okay. Anybody with minimal computer skills can figure your shit out. So if you own an iPad, an iPhone, a smartphone, a smart TV, a laptop with a camera, a, you have a smart thermostat or smart home or Alexa device, you have no secrets. And you've given a lot of your power away. This is a real thing. Okay. Um, two real world examples. First one, there was a criminal case against a, a woman that was uh, in a murder for hire um, case. And she had a conversation with the prospective murderer about killing her husband in the kitchen of her home where she had an Alexa device. Did she say, Alexa, take notes on my crime I'm about to commit? No, she didn't. But the prosecutors knew that Alexa is always listening and they were able to subpoena the records and that record of the conversation was recorded and entered into evidence and she was found guilty. How many of you have Alexa de devices in your home? Always listening. 
always listening. Okay. Second real world um, example, smart homes with a smart thermostat. So when you live in areas that for whatever reason, I'm not even going to go there, but the grid goes down or the grid starts getting maxed out and the power companies tell you to put your thermostat to 78 or 80 and it's 105 outside or 198% humidity and you're sweating at 78 and it feels almost like the same as outside. And you go, you know, I, I can, I can make my thermostat somewhere in the middle, right? Like I, I, maybe I like it at 72, but I'm going to compromise and put it at like 74. Cause that's like the, the number where I'm not sweating. I can go to sleep, be comfortable and just wear like clothing. And the power company decides we asked you nicely. Now we're just going to go in and we're going to Put your thermostat to 78 and lock it. We're going to lock you out of your thermostat. Or you can't afford to pay your fucking bills because they're ridiculous. And you're buying food and gas to go back and forth to work to try to sustain this ridiculous lifestyle that we're in now. Where everything costs 60% more at least. But I digress. And... You pay a little bit, but you couldn't pay the whole bill. And they go, okay, well, we're just going to lock you out of your, we're going to lock you out of your thermostat. It won't even come on. So that's how they disconnect your power or that's how they disconnect your, your utilities. Now, smart home, they just program it off. Hello. How much power are we willing to give away to AI in the name of convenience? Your laziness is going to be your downfall. Like legit. Technology does serve a purpose. And I, and I, and I definitely accept that within limits and within boundaries. So they know your details already. They're, you don't have any secrets. And it's time to understand this in a real world way. So the more that you do your shadow work, the more that you can declutter your space from things that do not serve your highest and best good. How do you know that? You might be saying, well, how would I know? Because I really, really like my Alexa or I really, really like my Audi or I really, really like my whatever. Well, you're not neutral to ask the question. We want you to be clear of your energy, but there are things that even if I asked my higher self, I'm not neutral about. And they are things that I really am invested in the answer. So in this regard, I would lean on someone else who's also clear, who doesn't have an invested interest on what I have in my home. And I just give them the question, is it in my highest and best good to have buy a new smart TV? And just have them ask their higher self because they don't have a, a dog in the hunt. That's how we do it. That's how we, we work smarter, not harder. And we try to take our power back and we try to be sovereign and authentic and understand that what, ha what matters at the end of the day is that we have our needs met and you can have some wants, but when the wants far exceed your needs and that's where you're putting your energy and that's where you're feeling your worth from the, the wants instead of the needs and from in within it's all comes from within you got some shadow work to do so what can i recommend stop by violetlotusenergy.com book your qet session get a handle on your own power and start to declutter do the shadow work declutter your mind and your physical space and you will be much happier for it I'm, I'm here to help you. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching. We can help clear the home, the land, all sorts of things. Just check it out. I'll see you again next time.